everybody, welcome back. My name is Em, I am the founder of Holly & Co and we make cool pet accessories for pooches and accessories for people. I don't know. Welcome back to another day, another dollar. So we've got a lot to do today actually. We've got orders, we have a couple of wholesale orders, we've got some hard to find orders. We're listed on hard to find which is such a cool website. Um, Oh, actually, I want to show you these. So, this was our original toy stand. And then the other day, we went and got this one. We just got to get some more pegs. And this one. How cool is this? And both of them were like 150 bucks for the two of them, which is a bargain because for those of you that don't know, retail shelves are really expensive. Um, and especially when you're not using them for retailish things. So that was cool. And we also got, I'll show you on this. I thought this was a really cool idea. So we got a stamp. Don't mind my appearance. I'm being reused for when we use, no, that didn't work like that. Cause, uh, we reuse all of our boxes and sometimes they look a little bit tatty and I don't want people to think that we're ripping them off. So. We just got them a little stamp. Okay, so I'm going to set y'all down. Let's print labels. So the other day on Instagram, I asked people what questions they wanted us to answer and I thought today we could finally do that because they've just been sitting there not being answered. So the first question is how many orders have you had? Um, hmm. Let me take a look. We are up to order 10,225. However, we had a website before our Shopify. We used to be on Wix and then obviously all your orders don't carry over from that. So how many would there have been on there? I don't know, 500 if that. Um, we also had an Etsy account. We had about a thousand on there. We also obviously have our wholesale orders. Um, we also list on hard to find. So there's orders on there. Um, so I don't know, 12,000. Ish, maybe next question I've started a small business and I would love some tips launching what are your tips Jen well get an ABN yes get an ABN because yes. no one ever does that and declare your tax declare your tax because it is not a hobby if you have the intention of making money it is not a hobby. Jane gets really angry about oh, this. Oh, I do. A lot of <laughs> people think, oh, it's a little hobby. But but uh, I just do it for fun. No. If you make a product and you want to make money from it, it is not a hobby. If you're just going to gift it to your friends or your family, it's a hobby. But if you have the intention of making money, it is a business. So do the correct thing. You will not fly under the radar. The tax company actually go through Etsy, eBay, all those things and see where your money is coming from, especially if you're getting Centrelink. Right, well said. But anyway, um, other tips on launching a business. Um, you do need money. We both yeah, work. Yeah, you need a we lot both of had... money. Another tip would be try to find something that's unique, that's not really that popular within the market that you want to enter. Um, and my last tip is just to do it because you know you can sit around and make your logo and make everything look really pretty and spend hours on a website but unless you actually start and start making products and marketing them nothing's gonna happen so just start just do it I mean the worst that can happen is that you don't get any sales and who cares like doesn't matter no so just start and be inspired but don't copy exactly. full stop exactly full stop good quote there Jen of this question <laughs> have you ever gotten something back from manufacturing that you hated yes yes we did <laughs> yes we did okay so this is also another tip back on the previous question get samples of everything that you ever want to get because if you don't you're going to get something that looks like a turd we got rope leashes and 
when I say they were fugly, they were the worst thing that I've ever seen in my life. They were big and clunky and awful and we stupidly didn't get a sample because we'd gotten other things manufactured and they were fine. So I was just like, oh, I don't need a sample? Why who needs a sample? I don't have time for a sample. Got them? No. We had to turn them all. They were so bad. So we wasted, I think it was like about $5,000. What's your favourite product? Mm. Um, my favourite design that we've ever had was You Grow Girl put a picture here somewhere we don't have that anymore but that was my favorite because that was holly's um harness that she had before she passed so that's my fave my favorite product is probably our bespoke bows i don't like making them but they look cute what about you gem what's your favorite product i actually love graffiti graffiti guys buy it no one buys it but it's actually really cool that was jen's idea it's and cool on every dog i don't it. know no one likes it Apart from that, I love our birthday boxes that we have. Bark day boxes. And they will yes. be coming back very shortly. They are coming back. We're just waiting for the weather to cool down so that we can have some treats in there that don't go gross in transit. So they will be coming back. How long does it take to make a new set from the design idea to released on the website? Uh, okay, so the process is you find a design or you make your own design. Um, you send it off to your manufacturer. They then do a mock-up so you can see what it's going to look like. That then goes into test printings. That takes maybe, I don't know, a week. You get those back, you make sure that the scale is all correct and it looks really pretty. And then you choose, um, well for us, we choose the trim on our harnesses because we have the different colours. Um, and also like the mesh backing on the harnesses, you choose the colour for that. Once you've done that, it goes into mass production. That probably takes a month, mm. would it? Maybe a bit longer, depending on how busy they are, the time of the year, that sort of stuff. And then shipping, uh, at least for us here in Tassie, takes maybe one to two weeks, and depending on if it gets stuck in customs and all that jazz. So from the time you actually come up with your idea and then get the product and release it and sell it because obviously we also do a lot of promoting before that it's probably a good three months would you say mm, mm. good three months so it's a really long time and then you have people that come out in the meantime with the thing that you've got being manufactured and that's a pain in the ass so yeah just remember when people bring things out they've had it in the manufacturing process for probably three months um so you know people that are like you copied blah 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 no no you didn't some people do. Oh, some people copy, but, um, but most of the time, no. Usually, no. Oh, this will be a good one for you, Jan. What made you make the switch from handmade walkwear to manufactured? So for those of you that don't know, yes. Jan used to hand make pretty much everything. I did the bows. <laughs> I was a bow queen. But Jan made collars, leashes, harnesses, strap harnesses, poo bags. She did everything. And we were sewing seven, seven days, days a, a week. week. All day. Yeah. Every day. Mm-hmm. It was exhausting. And let's just go back to when we first started our processing time, I think it was three or five days mm. or something, which was hilarious. And I remember we ended up getting our processing time to seven days and we're like, we're going to get it down, guys. We're so sorry. It ended up being four weeks. Our processing time was four weeks from when you purchased it and paid for it, four weeks before we sent it, because that's how long it took us to make with the backlog of orders, if that makes sense. At any one time, we probably had 200 orders outstanding every week, every time. Um, so that was what made us change. Mm. Jen just didn't lose her passion for sewing, but I guess you become like a bit of a robot. Mm. And a lot of people are like, why didn't you just hire someone? You can't just hire people because not only does it cost a lot of money to hire someone, you've got to pay them tax and super and all that, but then we felt like we'd lose control of our quality control because I knew how to make the products that I was making perfectly. Jen knew how to make the products that she was making perfectly. And so if you add someone else in, you've then got to try and train them to make the product exactly how we're making it. And obviously everybody sews differently. So we didn't think it was worth hiring somebody to then have a not probably as good product as what Jen can make, because Jen's a queen. <laughs> So yeah, it just came down to not having enough time and oh yeah, and Jen had a brain tumour 
in 2015. She's fine mm. now, guys. She's fine now. She's just a little bit fucked in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with that. <laughs> but she's fine now. But obviously, you know, making your mum so for you seven days a week is not great. And it wasn't just like, oh, a little bit of sewing seven days a week. It was like nine to six seven days a week and they're not even getting on top of it so we just decided that it was easier to get things manufactured um, especially to grow it to grow exactly mm. yeah that's sort of why we went mostly for time that's why we went to manufactured but also just so we could grow and have a wider variety of stuff you know like we can't make rope leashes we don't have time to do that we don't have time to bring out more velvet products you know like you get to a point where you can't bring out any more products because you've only got so much time in a day so being manufactured means you can bring out more stuff um, more sizes as well like an extra extra small harness mm. imagine you trying to make mm. that mm. that'd be so hard so anyway that's why we changed how long do handmade accessories take to make i.e. Sort of bespoke bows and loungewear um, we did a tutorial on how to make a bespoke bow. We, when we make them in bulk, I cut the fabric and Jen will um, put all the elastic on and sew the bows together. And then after I've done all that, I then put the bows together, like actually wrap the cotton around and stuff. Um, so when we tag team, we can probably do maybe like 100 to 200 bows in a day. So we're pretty quick with that. The loungewear actually takes a fairly long amount of time. Once again, we tag team that. I cut all the fabric out and lay all the pattern pieces together because you have like two sleeves, the body piece, the chest piece, and the neck. So it's actually a lot. And then Jen has to overlock all that, put it all together. So one top in the loungewear would probably take you a good half an hour, would you say? 20 oh, minutes? Yeah. Yeah, but then obviously you're making 10 of those mm. so times that so yeah it takes a long time which also just goes back into the other question <laughs> what's your least favorite of the current walkwear designs <laughs> the current ones oh i wish you had a asked of all time because i would have said wild child 100 percent hated that but in our current designs is graffiti only for the fact that it doesn't sell as well as i thought that it would and that's the reason that I don't like it, but I hated smiling. Actually, no, I ha it's in the current one. Sorry, I know it's current because we're still selling it, but I have an answer. I yeah. have a new answer for this. Wednesdays on Wednesdays, I hate that. Really? Yeah. No, I hate it. I don't know what it is about it. I hate that oh, pink. I, love that. I don't know. Maybe it's the flowers on it, but I hate that. Oh, I, every I time someone it. buys it, I'm like. Mm. No, I'm not. I'm like a good choice person. No, so that would be my answer. I wish no. we had have got a different pink flow. I hate the smileys. The smileys? That's yeah. Jen's answer. I liked it. I like it on then... dogs, but I don't like looking at it. <laughs> yeah, but is that just because we've had it for so long? Or Probably. Just... It irritates. And another answer would be the zebra print. I hate that yes. because someone copied it in the UK. So. Yeah. That w then it went on special straight away. Oh, it went in the clearance section straight away. This one's a good one. This is from Blue. Least favourite product you've ever made? What, that we don't like it or I didn't like making it? I think that we didn't like it when we had it, like once it was finished. That's what I'm taking from it. Right. Because least favourite product to make is bows. We've been over this. But least favourite product you've ever made, like I think when it was finished... I feel like there's a lot of things in the past when we handmade stuff that when it came through as an order, I'm like, ugh, I don't want to make that. But I don't actually know about a finished product. No, you know what I hated making? Poo bags. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I got really good at those. Oh. Um, those bandanas we had for weddings. Oh, and tuxedo had... bandanas. I was yeah. actually thinking that in the yeah. back of my I head. I love the look of it. Love the look of it. I hated making them. Hated making it. Absolutely. Oh. I feel like there are some bows in the past that I look at the fabric combinations and they're questionable. But besides that, I don't actually know if we've had anything no, that I... we always liked everything. Probably Wild Child. That was the one that we um, got in our first lot of walkwear stuff and I just didn't really like the colour. I don't know what I was expecting because I got sent pictures and we even got a sample I'm pretty sure mm. but when I just got it I don't know I was just disappointed I didn't really like the colour. I feel like it could have been brighter or lighter or it was just kind of like a poo poo brown. I liked it. And then people said it was mm. pink. I don't know. So that's probably something that I was not happy with. 
Next question, same from Blue. What product slash print sold the best of all time? Um, Fleur in mm. our handmade. We had that for like probably three years. Mm. That was the best seller. And mm. we brought it out recently in a new bow, mm. like as a classic print. And it sold again. And Celine in the Velvet. Celine in the Velvet, which was pink velvet. Gorgeous. Do you print your own materials slash tissue paper yourself? Um, I think they mean like our packing stuff. So this is our tissue paper. So the design is by me. I made the design, all of that. Um, but the actual tissue paper itself is from No Issue Co. We love that brand. They're amazing. Um, and all their stuff, for those of you wondering, is eco-friendly. Like that tissue paper is made with soy-based ink, so it's all eco-friendly. Um, all good for the earth. Um, but I design everything and then in terms of other packaging items like these um, These are from Vista print, but they're just cardboard. So I guess they're recyclable um, Once again, I design all of our stuff I don't feel the need to get a designer to do it because I don't know. I like doing it. I like design So I've designed all of those um, Oh, and these little sticker we didn't design this we actually had somebody draw this for us look how good it is um, but yeah so pretty much everything oh besides these I didn't make these obviously this is from Sunshine Packaging Co and these are actually recyclable too I feel like a lot of people think poly mailers are bad but some of them are recyclable like these ones um, but everything else I design myself, I just get them printed and we either get it from Vista Print or no issue because it's all eco-friendly and that's really important to us with our packaging. What are some supportive small businesses that have supported you? This is a really good one because I feel like when we first started we had a lot of people support us and then as we grew we just kind of got treated like shit by everybody, mm. I think, just because mm. we were successful. I don't know. So then for a really long time, we just distanced ourselves from mm. everybody because I was like, I don't want to be involved in drama. I don't want people stabbing me in the back. Um, but now we do have some really nice business friends out there. So the first one that comes to mind is Pilly Pooches. Kate from Pilly Pooches. She is hilarious. She keeps me going on days where I don't feel enthused. Um she's just a genuine person and you know isn't in it for a gain she doesn't want to use me for my followers or whatever she's just there because she's a genuine person um and another one would be laura from joella she's really nice and just normal just normal who do you like any business people a lot say they'll support you and would love to collab and that and as soon as you say you're ready for a collab they're like oh no yeah because someone's got in their ear and said we mean and nasty and mm -hmm. they don't even know us so it is hard because there's a lot like of chinese whispers there's a lot of drama and stuff on the gram especially and i try to stay out of it but of course that doesn't work um so I feel like there's a lot of businesses out there that don't actually know me and have never spoken to me mm. or Jen, but don't like it. It's just based on what other people have said. Samantha from so. my papa is very nice. She's just sold the business. We're not yes, sure to who actually, to, but when we one. started, she reached out and introduced herself. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so that was nice and welcomed us to Yes, Instagram Samantha was and, very nice yes. and she wasn't nasty or narky no. behind the scenes. She genuinely, she, we did a giveaway with her recently actually, mm. she was very nice. Mm. Um, yeah, so they're just some businesses that have supported us. But besides that, we don't really talk to other businesses because, no. as I said, I don't like to get involved. We've been treated pretty poorly in the past by some business people, so we just tend to mind our business mm. and, you know, do whatever. So if it doesn't look like we talk to many businesses, it's not because we're assholes, it's just because we don't want to. And we're very approachable <laughs> and we're not bitches. So no. here we go. <laughs> exactly. Any more velvet colours coming soon? I've always got velvet colours coming. I actually have two. One's a colour, one's a pattern. Um, always got new velvet colours coming. One's a good fit, you, Jen, because you made these. Do you rather, or would you rather, hand make slash sew your harnesses or have them manufactured? I think that's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> now, now we actually have them in stock. Mm -hmm. It's way better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. It was nice to make them and then see them out on dogs and you're like, oh, mm. I made that product because I feel like that with bows, mm. whereas when you have your manufactured stuff, obviously, it's still cool to see it on a dog, but it's not like, I made that product personally. 
So I mm. guess that would probably be the only time you miss it when mm. it's like that was my product I mm. made. But and we'd come up with the designs and I'd make it and mm. then you'd see another brand. Oh. I made the velvet lace harnesses. Oh. We came up with the idea. I made them, perfected it. We then went over to the manufactured range and then you see another brand coming running out around and pretending with it. like it's their And idea. you know that they bought one of ours and copied it mm -hmm. and it really pissed me off. So I think that's another time. reason that we prefer the manufactured over handmade because even though it's like, oh, that's my product, I've made that. You see other brands that have copied your product and it's so heartbreaking. Like if people copy our um, manufactured stuff, I actually don't give a shit because it's like whatever. Anyone can go to China or a manufacturer overseas and get something made. It's you know, not rocket science. But when you've spent the time and the effort coming up with a unique product and then someone comes along and they duplicate it exactly, that's like a kick in the teeth. We came up with the idea of a different tail on the bows like a velvet tail and then the plain top and then a velvet middle and I hadn't seen anyone else do that and then within a couple of weeks it's copied by all these different people and there's one brand out there that still does these bows and is parading around like they're the best and has their models going around saying they're the best bows you'll ever find and it hurts me because I'm like that's my bow like you're complimenting that brand but essentially you're complimenting me because it's my bow that I made so um, I think we prefer to have things manufactured just because there's less disappointment, essentially. Somebody asked what inspires you most. Actually, I have a really good response for this. This is a person slash a brand that really inspires me and that is Francesca Jewelry and I just happen to be wearing their necklace today. Um, they are Tasmanian based. They started at Salamanca Market in Hobart just making jewelry and selling it you know by themselves they are now like a multi-million dollar company they have employees they have a store in melbourne they are just mm. like i look at them and i think i want to yep. be like that you know mm. i remember we did a pop-up shop here in launceston a couple of years back maybe three years ago now and the owner of that asked us where do you want to be in five years and i was like like francesca that was my answer mm -hmm. because i just think that they're so inspirational and the fact that you can just start selling things at a market that are made by you and then become a global brand like that's crazy to me mm -hmm. so that's what inspires me most mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. what inspires you same same they are inspirational mm -hmm. women yes i mean that was more of a who inspired us mm -hmm. but i think that mm -hmm. that's a good answer and their jewellery is amazing. I love their jewellery. So, How did you start? Was it hard to find anyone to manufacture first products? Um, well, when we first started, we handmade, obviously. So we started... We actually had a baby business. It wasn't really a business. That was more of a hobby. Yeah, we that was a hobby. We weren't making money. Um, and we were just making bibs and bandanas. Blankets. Blankets. And teethers. I don't even know why we were doing that. We knew some people that were having babies and we made some mobiles and things and we made flower mobiles and then we just started doing that and then we both one day were like, why are we making baby stuff? Because we both hate kids. <laughs> um, we made Holly a collar. And then we made Holly a collar and we were going to section off our baby hobby business thing to have like fur baby stuff and then we said, why don't we just make that a business? And I made a website and an Etsy and we started an Instagram and made a terrible bow tie for Holly. The collar was good, the bow tie mm. was shit. Um, and we made some stuff for my brother's dogs and did a little photo shoot with them and then just took off. I can at remember the time. saying to you, what about if we get really busy, what will we do? Yeah, we used to always, well, Jan used to always say like, we'll never be like blah, blah, blah. I think it was more just we started because we loved dogs. We loved Holly, mm. obviously still do mm. and we just didn't really have any expectations and I think that is why we've gotten to where we are now um, and was it hard to find anyone to manufacture first products um, it kind of was when we first get it get it got things manufactured because I had no idea about like finding suppliers and liaising with them I was like am I professional when I message them or am I like hey bro what up it wasn't, I guess it was just uh, hard when you've got to outlay like $20,000 to get products and you have no idea whether they're going to sell or whatever. So that would have been the hardest part. Not necessarily finding the people to manufacture the stuff, but like outlaying so much money. 
did you expect your business to grow as much as it did? I feel like we've talked about we this just, already. We but just did that then, really. No, I, of course we didn't. Like, I was I don't panicking know. about it. Jen Only because panicking. we were making it ourselves. Yeah, when we were handmade and we started to grow so quick, oh, we were both panicking a lot because we were like, well, what the hell are we going to do? Like, we'll have to hire all these mm. people and mm. then we'll have people working in our house because at the time we're working from home. Lucky we had a studio out the back yeah. off the carport. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, but in general, we no. could keep it separate. I don't think anyone expects no. their business to grow when it no. does. We, As I said, we didn't have any expectations and I think that's why we've been successful, mm. just because we've sort of let it flow and I don't know I don't really take I take it seriously obviously it's my job but like when I post things on Instagram I don't necessarily speak all professional and try and be someone I'm not I just like let me shine through and I think that's why we've been successful as well because you know I just post things on Instagram that I think are funny and cool and whatever um, so we didn't expect to grow as much as we did but we have so what was the best thing in your business journey so far? Um, I want to say being featured in magazines, but now everybody gets featured. So it's not really that special. Um, getting an office, that was a pretty yes. big milestone for me yes. because I never thought I would have to or would get an office ever in my life. So that was a pretty big milestone. Um, it was the best thing. Finally trademarking Holly & Co. Yes, finally that getting was a our journey. trademark through. Yeah, well, okay. So we trademarked Holly and Co. Because and our Dog Mummy Jar. said to. Um, and then right on the day that it was meant to be due for trademarking, which by the way, if you don't know, trademarking takes like about a year. It has to go through all this process of just red tape, basically. Um, this person from the UK who will remain anonymous, but I think you can pretty much guess, came forward, sent us a cease and desist and said, you can't trademark. Uh, why so we had to obviously get our intellectual property lawyer involved and it cost us like tens of thousands of dollars I reckon probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars just to fight for our right to trademark Holly & Co in Australia on pet accessories because some random person from the UK that what even is her business like she supports small business ironically <laughs> um, she didn't want us She's to trademark like a... it an inspiration to us all. Yeah. <laughs> we, like don't, we don't even really know what she does. An inspiration to small businesses. Like a business mentor does. or something. Yeah. We don't really know. She has a podcast and stuff. But yeah. yeah, she didn't want us to trademark on pet accessories in Australia. And I was like, no, you're not going to bully us out of it. And so. We did think, do we change our name? Yeah, actually, we toyed with the idea of changing our name. Uh, but we didn't and we fought for it and I think she just thought because we were a small business that we'd just bow down and she could have the trademark and then she'd be able to have pet accessories in Australia with Holly & Co on it and so we fought for it twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 later and we finally got it so that was a really good business journey because mm. um, when it finally came through it was just like this weight was lifted off our shoulders mm. and it's something that we never talked about publicly and you know people were being mean to us on Instagram and stuff and we had to deal with all this behind the scenes so that was really hard but once it finally got through that was probably the best thing as well with our business journey so that's another thing getting into like your property lawyer because people will come for you for nothing where are your products made I mean China I feel like everyone everyone's mm. products get made in China mm. and I just want to point out though that I don't know about other businesses I can't talk on their behalf but we do our research and make sure that we're not like exploiting workers and it's not you know like poor working conditions and like people are getting paid fairly and they've got all their certification and all that sort of stuff so you know I feel like when you say your stuff's made in China everybody's like oh my god like child slave labor that's not and they're working for a, a bowl thing. of rice I it's don't know. not like that these days I mean there might mm. be factories like that but we don't have that so it's made in China because it's affordable and they're good at what they do. Simple. And I don't think there's anyone in Australia that does do it. There's no, yeah, no one in Australia mm. makes this stuff. And if they did, you'd mm. be paying probably triple the price. Mm. So someone said, not a question. You guys are amazing. H&C is our fave online shop. Thank you. That's Love amazing. You. Thank you.
I thought that I would show you what we got from Spotlight. Um, I'm going to start with non-fabric stuff. Um, so I actually got a pair of scissor things. I don't actually know. I just thought these looked really cool because when I cut um, loungewear for Jan, I always find that it like rubs on my finger. I actually just noticed on there it says arthritis foundation ease of use. So um, hopefully it'll be really good. So I'll give those a try. I got two more packets of rotary blades because you only get two in a thing and they're really expensive and the amount of bows that we make they don't last very long so I got more of those. That's all for non-fabric stuff. So we got this. Uh, I got the whole bolt. I didn't realize there was seven and a half meters on there but they had 30% off if you emptied the bolt I think and I really liked it and we have a project coming up that we're working on. I don't think I can say. I'm not going to say but we're going to this with it. Um, I also wanted to make bows and I also thought it would make either a nice skirt, dress or collots. Jen's made me a pair of collots before and I love them so I might get her to make me something else. So seven and a half meters of that. We also got this. It's tiny little daisies. It really reminds me of our Daisy Me Roland uh, Nomad that we had but this is also for the special thing that we've got planned. So that'll be going with that. I then got this one. This is a poplin and this is also for the special project. So I don't know. It's cute, but like I don't really think I would use it for my own bows. So it's going for the project. And then this also, we've already had this before, but I got more for the project. And y'all are probably like, what the hell is the project? I don't want to say it because someone will copy it. Let's be honest. Um, we then got, now these ones are for us. So hopefully I've already released them before this video goes out because otherwise some moron's going to go to Spotlight and be like, I'm going to copy home and go. Rayon. Let me just talk about Rayon. Rayon is the best damn material in the world. It is kind of hard to work with for bows because it's like slippery and thin, but I really like it. And it comes in so many pretty patterns. And today I went in and they had all these new ones, which they never do. So we got a lot. Um, we got this one. It actually had like a, a brother print. It had a sister print. Um, it was in like a darker color, but I didn't like that as much. So I just got the one um, and we'll see how that sells. And if it's good, I might get the other one. And then I got this. I have never seen like a check or a plaid in rayon ever in my life. So when I saw this, I had to have it. It's very simple, but it's like a, a sage green color really pretty also that in like pajama pants that would be amazing so i got that and i then got the pink sibling and this rayon's actually a little bit thicker so that'll be quite nice to work with so the blush pink i then got this is rayon as well really pretty daisies and i don't even know what those flowers are irises maybe super super pretty and it's a lilac color and you can never go wrong with lilac and the final one now i've seen other people using this and when i've seen it i've died because i think it is gorgeous and you know that we have butterflies and i really like butterflies i think that they're really pretty so when i saw this and look i avoid glitters just because i don't think they're appropriate for dogs i don't know glitter comes off it's messy it's annoying but I made an exception for this one. Oh, look how pretty it is. Oh my God. So it's this beautiful, gorgeous sky blue color, but it's glitter. I don't know if it's really doing it justice. Look at that. Oh my God. So I got two meters of that. Um, probably just gonna do that in bows. It's gonna be a pain in the bum to work with because of the glitter, but I think it's going to be really good. So my plan was the next collection probably wasn't going to be until Easter, but then I realized that Easter is actually really far away. I didn't realize it's like halfway through April. I thought it was March last year, but anyway, Easter is really far away this year. So that means I got more time to do something before my Easter collection. So I think I'm going to release those bows um, as a little bit of a something different. I have another um we have that like side project coming up 
that I'm hoping will be able to release in a couple of weeks. And then I've also got something else that I'm working on that's bow related, um, like a special kind of collection, but I gotta wait for some stuff to come from overseas, so go wait for that. And then I've got two velvets, a plain and a patterned, uh, but I think I might release them for Easter. They're not really Easter themed, but I think they'd go nice with our Easter stuff, so maybe, I don't really know. So that's what's coming up. So hopefully I release those bows before this video because I know people are going to copy. So 